We are going to be drawing a howler monkey today, and you're going to want to start out with basic shapes, just like whenever you draw anything. So we're doing ovals to start off, so we got the head, the body, and the back of the body, so the butt. And it's going to be at a little bit different angles, remember? Very, very lightly to start off. Once you get your basic shapes in, you can start blocking in the side of the face. Now remember you still want to be relatively light because a lot of these are going to be erased. So I'm getting the side because he's going to be looking at a little bit of an angle. And it's a howler monkey so he's going to have, or she, maybe it's a girl, uh, but the monkey is going to have a relatively large mouth. So you got to keep that in mind as you work. And since it is an open mouth, a lot of times that's going to be relatively dark. And I think I got the nose in a little bit wrong spot, so I'm going to slide it over just a hair. That's why it's important to always work lightly and reposition where I want the nostrils. Just blocking in the eyes right now. Remember, since it is, the head's at a slight angle, one of the eyes will be more distinct than the other. Then you can start kind of shaping where everything's going to be. I'm just adding a few more values within the mouth. And then I'm going to figure out the top of the head here. So since it's at an angle, I'm not going to be able to see the entirety of the side of the face. We're wrapping around, get the top of the head, and down into the body. Now remember those circles that you made initially, or those ovals, they're just guidelines. You don't have to use them completely. They're just your base to help you get started. As you're working, remember, if you wanted to look up a specific picture of a howler monkey, you can always do that. Having references can do nothing but help you along. So that is always advisable. I'm blocking in the front leg right now. The front leg is going to be a little bit smaller than the back legs. Back legs are always a little bit stronger, generally speaking, whether it's an animal or a human that you're drawing. So the front leg looks a little bit shorter and a little bit skinnier. And then circling around the back of the body and into the leg. Make sure you have angles within your legs so it looks as if it has bones, not noodle limbs, which would be problematic. The exception to that, of course, is going to be when we do the tail. Tails are very wiggly. And since it's a howler monkey, and the monkey is going to reside in a tree, let's have the tail wrap around a branch. And right now it's just kind of floating, so let's give it a branch. Remember, if I'm going too fast at all, you can always pause the video whenever you need to. Or rewind. And give it a couple more branches in there, so we have the illusion of it being inside or on in the, a tree. In its environment and start shaping the bottom of the body. We also need the other two legs to help make it look like a three-dimensional animal. And we still have our creating our base drawing, so if you ever need to edit as you go, absolutely do that. Getting into our second leg, that back leg, it's obviously gonna be quite a bit smaller. And you won't see the whole thing, especially up by the hip, because that would be on the opposite side of the body. So keep that in mind as you're working. And then you need that other front leg as well. And again, since it's on the opposite side, it'll be a little bit hidden, but it's closer to the viewer, in this case you. So it's going to be a little bit larger and more distinct than that back leg. 
I'm just reworking some of the claws right now and then getting in the tree he or she the monkey itself is standing on you can put some different branches in as well just to give a little bit, bit more visual interest to your drawing and i'm going to make that other branch a little bit longer than it was initially and start editing some of my base Now, I am starting to get a lot of lines in here, and I don't need all of those anymore, so I can grab my eraser or flip over my pencil and get rid of those so it's not quite so visually distracting. And then I can start shading and figuring out where my values are. Now, you have to remember that um, a monkey has fur, so you want to be able to see some of the lines that you're creating you don't want everything to be perfectly blended together because some of that texture is going to help establish that it is fur. I'm using a lot of hatching lines, so just straight lines to start off. And the back leg is going to be a little bit darker since it's under the body, so keep that in mind as you're working. And I'm just hopping around my drawing right now. I don't want to get too tied up in one specific area, so I'm going back and forth to different spots and just adding a little here and there to start off. Again, under that front leg and under the chin, it's gonna be a little bit darker. And as you're creating your lines and shading, this is gonna be a great opportunity to really make the monkey look distinctly like a monkey. And that's gonna be a big part with it being around the face and shaping your lines in the specific direction that you want them to be going. So it's a little arch around the eyebrows. I know you can't see because my hand's in the way, sorry. Um, but it's a little arch around the eyebrows, or the eyes to establish eyebrows and establish the shape of the face. All lines go in the same direction initially, and then I, just like that back paw, it's a little bit darker than that front paw as well. I'm darkening up the eyes a little bit right now. I might go in and add some highlights to them later, but just establishing some darker areas and values. Again, you don't have to use this type of shading, so I'm using hatching as my technique for this drawing primarily, but you don't have to. Now I'm going to speed up the drawing a little bit, since after this point, we already got our base drawing done, and now all it is is shading. And if you want, at any time, you can of course pause it or rewind it, but it's all just shading and establishing your various tones. Don't forget to add values within your branch as well. You don't want to color the whole thing. You want to have a dark side and a light side so that it looks three-dimensional. But you really don't have to do too much, just a little bit. Your primary focus should be on your animal. And your tail is wrapping, so make sure you establish those values as well. And by this point, you really shouldn't see any of your original ovals, or barely at all. And your animal's really starting to take shape. You can use the side of your pencil if you want, like I am now, or just the regular tip. It's totally up to you. It's all a personal preference. Blending stumps are available for you to use if you want to check one out at school. Or if you have one of your own, they are always an option. But remember, they are going to smudge and take away a lot of your highlights and soften up some of your really dark areas. So once I finish this here, I'm going to need to go back in with a pencil and reestablish some of my really, really dark areas. I'm also going to bring back some of my texture within the firm with my lines. So. That's very important if you're using the blending tool 
to not just gray everything out, but you want to make sure you go back in and reestablish some of your dark areas. As you're working to make sure you try not to smudge your paper. I'm actually lifting up my hand as I'm working, so very little of my wrist or arm is touching my paper. We don't want to make it look like our monkey is floating on the tree, so make sure you add value or that shadow underneath his feet, his or her, doesn't matter, whichever you feel like, and then just a little bit of shading within your tree as well. Doesn't have to be anything too fancy. I'm gonna edit the foot here just a smidge because I lost one of the claws. But first, let's label it. And then you have a monkey. Thanks for watching.